first, and then Valkyria will follow. Uh, we would like to begin by thanking the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada and the Canada Research Chairs Program, which funds my chair in Globalization and Cultural Studies, for the funding that has made today's and tomorrow's meeting possible and that has made this partnership possible. Um, so as principal investigator of the Brazil-Canada Partnership Exchange Project, I am delighted um, to see that this project linking Glendon and its various centers uh, with its expertise in Canadian hemispheric translation and language studies, it's a perfect fit for our project. And we're very, very happy to be here today. And we want to thank you for your very warm hospitality, for this welcoming space, and for the multilingual environment that you have provided uh, for us here. It's really wonderful uh, to be looking forward to the next two days here. I especially want to thank the team members, Ian Martin, Brian Morgan, for all their work in putting together this exciting program with its many opportunities for research sharing and development, and to thank all the other people at Glendon who have made this meeting possible. Um, I also want to thank the three research assistants at the University of Manitoba and all of you for taking time from your busy schedules to come here today. As you know, this two-day workshop is going to play a major role in facilitating our agenda. The overarching goals of our project are ambitious. Briefly to remind you, they're to strengthen transnational literacy and cross-cultural understanding, both within Brazil and Canada and between Brazil and Canada. They are to work with English teachers and teachers in training to integrate theory and practice, developing site-specific learning strategies appropriate to global challenges. They're to advance understanding of how globalization is affecting education at all levels in Brazil and in Canada. To advance the Brazil-Canada relationship more generally and to contribute to understanding how to make this kind of transnational, transdisciplinary research partnership work. We're still experimenting with this kind of collaborative work across distances uh, and across differences. So the goal of this meeting, first of all, is to get to know each other better. And we've already started that process with the presentations from some colleagues at Glendon. It's to work together to facilitate our objectives, share our research, what we're achieving and the roadblocks we're encountering. Figuring out how to work together more effectively and involving the next generation of researchers in our work. And we're delighted to welcome one MA student and three PhD students from the University um, of Sao Paulo and one PhD from the Federal University of Alagoas, um, one MA and one PhD student from the University of Manitoba. And I know there are um, some uh, graduate students here from Glendon as well, and I hope there will be more during the rest of the day. Um, when we meet for the next two days after this is over in, uh, at the University of Manitoba and the University of Winnipeg, we will have many more graduate students and postdoctoral fellows joining us there. So our, our project, as most of you know, uh, I think most of you have actually spent brief research stints at the Center for Globalization and Cultural Studies at the University of Manitoba already. But a brief reminder that the partnership is between the Center at the University of Manitoba, which I direct, and two units at the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, the National Curriculum Project in English 
which is directed by Valkyria Monte Moore um, okay. and Lynn Mario Menezes de Souza. Uh, and Valkyria will be talking about that project and what it contributes to our partnership when I finish. And, uh, but she also directs the Canadian Studies Nucleus at the University of Sao Paulo. So that too is part of our work. Um, in addition to the partnership with Glendon, the University of Winnipeg, State University of Mato Grosso do Sul, Federal University of Alagoas, of Sergipe, of Minas Gerais, and the Association of English Teachers of Mato Grosso do Sul in Brazil. So our partnership depends on exchange at both informal and formal levels among the co-investigators and our partners within our larger groups of local research teams, including students, in some cases pre-service, in-service and practicing teachers, and extending outward beyond these groups to the larger academic community, and to the many interested parties around the world who follow our blogs, Twitter feeds, Vimeo, and YouTube videos, and Facebook sites. So we're finding a positive response to our experimentation with using social networks for serious research exchange, but we know there's more that we could be doing. Through our use of new technologies, we are trying to expand the audience for serious thinking beyond exclusively academic publications to share the pleasure in the work we do beyond our immediate circle and to widen opportunities for meaningful exchange in knowledge co-creation. And in that spirit of key words that we just heard spoken about, you know, for us, knowledge co-creation is essential. We are not just transmitting or sharing information. We are going beyond that because we see ourselves as knowledge producers. And we see that role as a key role as the world globalizes and as the entire educational system finds itself under pressures to change. Um, we want to be there to direct that change in positive and equitable directions. So this is all part of what we mean by transnational literacies. Um, it's a complex concept. One of our research contributions will be to make it much clearer what transnational literacies involve and what they mean, but they will always change in response to different local situations, different languages through which they're expressed, and in response to the changing global environment. So, as you know, we have selected transformational practices in the teaching of English in universities and schools in Brazil and Canada as the key site of intervention. And we've done this because this is where English studies, cultural studies, globalization studies, applied linguistics, social linguistics, new media education, and institutional restructuring in global higher education meet it's a good place for thinking about all these things together. So later today, we'll have more time to talk about the research we're doing in the project. Briefly, it involves revising what literacy means beyond conventional notions of reading and writing by insisting that we include an awareness of the power relations built into knowledge production in local and cross-cultural contexts. It requires in learners an ability for self-critique, vigilance, and openness to challenge. For Gayatri Spivak, who first coined this term, transnational literacy requires deep language learning and a special attentiveness to what she terms the pre-capitalist cultures of the world. Best developed, she argues, through a process of mutual interruption between the multidisciplines of comparative literature and area studies. 
So to speak of transnational literacies is to recognize that our lives are becoming global in ways that are changing our experience of what it means to be a national subject and to live in a particular locality. So our goal then is to use English to mobilize the global power of English to advance reciprocal exchange with equity-seeking groups and to counter the toxic power of English to silence other forms of knowing and speaking. So the project is designed in the belief that Canada and Brazil have a lot to learn from each other. We hold the potential together to change our learning initiatives and our educational reforms that can help students learn to live successfully in our rapidly changing global world. Spivet describes the task of transnational literacy as to keep responsibility alive in the reading and teaching of the textual. And that's a mandate that we hope to achieve through our interactions here over the next two days. So Valkyria is now going to talk about one of those important partners um, who is part of this transnational literacies agenda, uh, the national project in the teaching of English that she and um, Lynn Mario de Souza co-direct. Mm -hmm. okay.